Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new Intel NUC codename Wall Street Canyon. Now this is one I've been waiting for for a little while now because uh, with this we get 12 cores and 16 threads. We've got plenty of CPU power. We've done some testing with this same CPU on the channel, but you know I love these small form factor PCs. And they're actually offering these in two different form factors. You can get the tall NUC or the short version, which we have here. And with the short version, basically the only difference here is it doesn't have room for a 2.5 inch drive. Cooling system and everything else is the same. And with this, we do get two M.2 drives in here, so we can add a lot of storage. In the past, with these consumer NUCs, Intel always opted for a gloss finish on the top, but this one here is matte, so it's not going to pick up as many fingerprints or dust. But, you know, if you got cats like me, there's going to be hair everywhere anyway. But so far, loving the form factor. Now, the unit that I have here is bare bones, which means I will have to add storage and RAM, but it does have a Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 module already pre-installed. This is user replaceable. And inside of the box, you're going to get a vase mount, some hardware to attach said mount, and a 120 watt power supply. When it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got two full-size USB 3.2 ports and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Not much at all going on on each side. We've got some ventilation and a Kinston lock over here on the left-hand side. All the action is really happening around back. Because back here, we've got two full-size HDMI ports, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, another full-size USB 3.2 port. We've also got a USB 2.0 port back here and two USB 4.0 ports. When I'm talking about Intel, I call these Thunderbolt 4 because they are fully compatible. So yeah, we'll be adding an eGPU to this by the end of the video. Now I've already configured this with 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's using SoDim DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. Unfortunately, they haven't upgraded these to DDR5 yet. Hopefully next year they will. I've also added a 500 gigabyte NVMe Kingston M.2 drive. And as you can see, we've got an extra M.2 in here. And underneath the drive I've already installed is our Wi-Fi 6 module. It's also got Bluetooth 5.2, and they've also integrated kind of an M.2 SSD heatsink in the bottom of the case. When it comes to the specs of the new 12th Gen NUX, they offer these from the i3 up to the i7, and we've got the higher-end model here. It's known as an Intel NUC 12 Pro, or the NUC 12 WSK i7. We've got an Intel i7 1260p with 12 cores and 16 threads, 4 performance cores with a max clock up to 4.7 GHz, and 8 efficiency cores with a clock up to 3.4 GHz. For the GPU, we've got built-in Iris Xe graphics with 96 execution units. This utilizes dual-channel DDR4 up to 3200 MHz, and we're configured with 16 gigs in this unit. And the operating system we're going to be using in this video is Windows 11 Pro, but you could install Linux if you want to. Alright, so I've checked out the BIOS here, and it looks like we've got a burst up to 64 watts, and that does seem a little high for the heatsink we have here, but I was really interested just to kind of test it out here. So I've got core temp running. You can see our wattage here. And uh, if I go to bench, and remember, this is just stressing out the CPU. And yeah, it jumps right up to 61 watts. Now this was the stock configuration in the BIOS. We can lower this a bit, but remember, this is the burst TDP. It's not gonna run like this all day. The base TDP is 35 watts, which is definitely more reasonable. But yeah, I mean, with this little PC running at 61 watts and some other systems that I've tested, We'd already be hitting thermal throttle right now, but this is actually pretty good. Fan's not super blasting right now. It's a little louder than it was before. But so far, everything's been working really well. And yeah, with that 1260p, even at around 20 watts, you can use this all day long like a normal PC. You want to get some web browsing, email checking, document editing. You can even do photo editing on this. Keep in mind that we've got four performance cores and eight efficiency cores. But those eight efficiency cores actually do a pretty good job. And they clock up to 3.4 gigahertz. In this video, on the stock iGPU, we're going to be testing out some gaming and emulation. Then we're going to move over to an external GPU, but first up, let's take a look at some benchmarks. Here's Geekbench 5, and this is really impressive. I mean, the way they've got this set up right out of the box, you've got plenty of performance. Single core coming in with a 1,645, multi 9,590, and I'm sure we could get a little over 10,000 out of the multi side of things if we did some tuning in the BIOS, mainly upping the turbo time on this thing. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, here we have 3D Mark Firestrike with a 4,879, remember we're on that iGPU, and finally Time Spy with a 1,882. 
Now, from what I've tested so far, CPU performance on this thing is outstanding, but we could definitely use a better iGPU. It's set up the way it is, and we're going to test out some gaming and emulation on the iGPU. Then we'll connect an eGPU to this thing and just totally up the performance on this mini PC. So the first game we have here is Spider-Man Remastered, and I've not had really good luck with Intel integrated GPUs in this game yet. Hopefully in the future we get a little more optimizations, but it's not horribly bad. We're at 720p low, we can get an average of around 41 FPS. Now it would be nice to be able to play this at 60 on this internal GPU, but it's just not going to cut it right now. Next up, we've got Forza Horizon 5. This is one that, you know, works on a lot of different systems. I think they did a pretty good job putting this out in the first place, you know, with how well it runs on lower-end iGPUs and lower-end CPUs in general. 1080p, low settings with resolution scale set to balance. We can get over 60 FPS with it. On average, around 68. But yeah, this is just one that works really well on a lot of different systems right now. It handles Genshin Impact really well. We're at 1080p with a low medium mix, and we got a constant 60 out of this. I only saw it dip down to 58 one time when there was a lot of particles on screen. But overall, we're seeing some really great performance with Genshin Impact on this PC. So this little setup did decently with PC gaming, but where these little Alder Lake chips shine is emulation. Here we have some PS2 at 1080p, I'm using PC SX2, Ratchet and Clank running at full speed. We're on the balance preset, and as long as the game you want to play is compatible with the PC SX2 emulator, you'll be able to run it at 720p up to 1080. Another one I wanted to throw in here was some original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded. This is upscaled to 720p DOA3, and as you can see, it's running at a constant 60. We're only pulling around 32 watts at max with this setup. And the final thing I wanted to test here was some PS3 emulation using RPCS3. We're at the stock resolution, which I believe is 720p, Vulcan back in, and the 1260p can handle this emulator. When it comes to gaming on the internal graphics, it definitely leaves a little more to be desired, but remember, we've got Thunderbolt 4. So what I've got here is my eGPU dock. This is actually a Thunderbolt 3 eGPU dock. And I was going to go with something really high end, like a 3080 Ti, but I figured we'd just go with the 3060 in here to see how it performs. And I think with this GPU here, paired up with the 1260p, we're going to get some really great performance. Alright, so I had to update the NVIDIA driver. Windows downloaded a very old one. I've got Afterburner here. I can control the fans. So we're working with this GPU. And from the task manager, you can see that we've got that 1260p, our 16 gigabytes of RAM, still have access to the Intel Iris Xe graphics, but this is what we're going to be utilizing, the RTX 3060 non-TI variant. And yeah, we're getting some really good performance. So I'll head into settings, just show you that we're at 1440p, no resolution scale going whatsoever, high settings. So since we're working over a Thunderbolt port here, we are losing some performance out on that 3060. But I'll tell you right now, I'm more than happy with the way it performs here at 1440p. I do like these Alder Lake mobile chips here, and if you take a look at Afterburner, since we don't have to send any power to the internal GPU, we're only pulling around 32 watts from the CPU itself. I mean, we've got plenty of power on that side, and now with the RTX 3060, we can run this game really well. I've got one more here to test, God of War 1080p Ultra settings. Now it wouldn't handle 1440p Ultra with the setup I have here. We could drop it down to a low medium mix at 1440p with this external GPU, but I still think it looks great at 1080p Ultra. So in the end, I'm really digging the Nook 12 Pro, especially this version here with the i7. I was actually expecting higher temps out of the CPU, but through all of my testing, the highest temp I saw was 84 degrees Celsius. It didn't thermal throttle on me while gaming or running my benchmarks. Love the connectivity here, especially the fact that we've got those two USB 4 ports on the back, or Thunderbolt 4 as I call them with these Intel systems. If you're going to connect an eGPU, you do have plenty of CPU power here. The stock iGPU definitely leaves more to be desired, but we've got a little bit of upgradability with those Thunderbolt ports. I would like to install Linux on this and see how it performs, so if you're interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments below. And if you're into videos like this one, it'd be pretty cool if you could hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. 
If you're interested in learning more about the Nook 12 Pro, be it the i3 up to the i7 model, I'll leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.